welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday broadcast for Bible Track Echoes this week. Thanks so much for joining us. This is, as I said, our Tuesday edition, our Tracked and Truth Tuesday edition. That's the title we have for quite some time now given to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast, Tracked and Truth. Obviously, Tracked, we're referring to gospel tracks. My announcer has already mentioned the fact that Bible Tracked Echoes is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated, and that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. We're talking about a short written presentation of the Word of God, the Gospel of God, and it's a great powerful tool that helps people come to Christ all over the world. I want to put some gospel tracks into your hand. I'm will, I can do that if you'll help me. If you'll give me your name and address, we'll talk more about how you can help us uh, get that information to us in just a moment. I've got my Bible open today to the book of James, James chapter 1, to some very familiar verses. We have begun a study in the book of Titus, but it's Tuesday, and on Tuesday broadcast, we give ourselves over to helping strengthen our ability to communicate the gospel, to hand out gospel tracts, to become a sharper tool in God's toolbox to see people receive Christ as Savior. First, receive the gospel. You and I can't get them saved, but we can give them the gospel. They cannot come to faith in Jesus Christ unless we first give them the gospel. I've got a gospel tract here in front of me I want to talk to you about, but let me prepare us for today's broadcast this way. Now, if you're listening to the broadcast on its intended airing date, then today is January the 2nd, 2018, and I wanted to begin this year's series of Tract and Truth Tuesday broadcast with a very simple challenge about placing our confidence in God's strength to do gospel work. A whole lot of believers honestly have a genuine heart desire to share the gospel with others. That desire, friend, is a gift of God's grace to you. But in the hearts of many of those folk, there is something else. It's called fear. It's called being scared to death. I have repeatedly made this statement over the years. That is that the best gospel track God has in his toolbox is you and I living a victorious Christian-centered, a Christ-centered life, and then you and I verbally telling the gospel to a lost person. The best gospel tract God has is you and me living a victorious Christ-centered life and then you and I telling the gospel to somebody who doesn't know him. One way to help get a young believer or a weak believer to the place of verbalizing the gospel is to help them start their gospel-telling experience by passing out gospel tracts, even that can be a fearful thing for many folk. But let's let's help one another today with our confidence in doing God's work, shall we? All right, get your Bible open to the book of James chapter 1, and why don't you jot down a couple of verses as we go along. I mentioned gospel tracts here a moment ago. I have our newest gospel tract in my hand. We've had it now for a while. This one is entitled, Do You Know For Sure?, Do you know for sure? If you're listening today and you are a believer, but you struggle with great sense of assurance of your salvation, get this track, read through it, read the verses that are here very carefully, very clearly. This track will help you have confidence that yes, God has taken your sin away. And when Satan tries to 
befuddle your confidence in God, you can respond to him just as Jesus did in Matthew 4 by quoting the word of God. But this track, Do You Know For Sure, is a powerful tool to help people come to faith in Jesus Christ. It was written and designed as a team effort. The one that is a key part of this was a missionary to Mormon people for over 50 years. God used him to see many, many people come to faith in Jesus Christ. And out of his experience, this track was written, Do You Know For Sure? We just helped put some finishing touches on it, and it is a tremendous blessing. Now, the word Mormon is does not appear in here, and that's done for a reason. This gospel track can be a powerful tool in any person's life who doesn't know Christ, not just a Mormon. If you have friends that are putting their confidence into some priest of some kind, here is a great, great tool for you. Do you know for sure? At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you three different ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. If you can't wait to the end and jot down one of those, then just jot this down, BibleTracksInc.org. That's our website. Go there and get that sample packet of of Gospel Tracks. Give us your name and address, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 say these words, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now, sometime, for whatever reason, believers can uh, feel like they can't do certain things. If somebody comes and asks you to sing in the choir and you cannot carry a tune, you cannot, well, what's the old saying? You can't carry a tune in a bucket. If you can't carry a tune in a bucket, then don't be in the choir. But did you know that God has called on all of us to sing to him? But that doesn't mean we have to be in the choir or sing a solo. There are some things that God has called all of us to do. Singing unto the Lord with joy in our heart is one of them. One of the other things that God has called all of us to do is tell the gospel to those who do not know Christ as Savior. Now, beloved, God has provided some wonderful help for those of us who struggle with fear. God has placed in his word some promises, and these promises need to become our answer to the fears in our hearts. The day you received Christ as Savior, somebody told you the gospel. They shared God's word with you, and they read or quoted to you verses from the Bible, and they talked about receiving the gift of eternal life. You and I were told that God promised to give us everlasting life if we simply placed our faith in Jesus Christ, and we did. Now, I realize that in that our society has been moving away from using paper checks to pay their bills, but you'll understand what I'm talking about here because you understand how a check, a physical check works. If somebody gives you a signed check, you can trust it. You go to the bank, you can cash it. And once you cash it, you can get to enjoy the money that was promised there by that little piece of paper called a check. Well, my friend, all of God's promises are just like that. They are signed checks. You and I can cash them in and use the and receive the blessings as a promise. One of the very best ways to prepare to share the gospel is to pray God's promises back to him. And our verses there that I read out of James 1, verses 6 and 7, tell us to pray and ask in faith and not to doubt what God has promised. One really good verse to pray back to God is the one found in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, which says, be anxious, be careful, be fearful about nothing, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. The very next verse, Philippians 1, 7 says that God will give us his peace. Now, here is a good practice for you. Take Philippians 4, 6, and 7 and pray them to God, but do it in a form of a thank you prayer. Something like this. Thank you, Father, that because I come and pray to you about my fear of telling the gospel, my fear of giving out gospel tracts, that you're going to give me your peace as I do that. 
There's another promise in Philippians chapter 4. It's found in verse 13. It's a great promise. It says, I can do all things. Do you know the rest of the verse? I hope you do. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Turn that verse into a thanksgiving prayer. Father, thank you that I can do what you want me to do, even share the gospel today, because you have and you will. Notice what I said. You have and you will give to me the strength of Jesus to help me. You give me the strength of Jesus. Here's a key piece of information that you and I need to uh, make sure we note here and point out. God's peace and power tend to come on us when we need it, but not before. Many, many times I've had people say to me when I was their pastor, Pastor, I'm afraid of dying. Will God give me dying grace? I said, yes. And then they went ahead and they began to pray and got, asked God to give them dying grace. They come back and say, Pastor, I don't have any dying grace. I don't have any peace about dying. I said, well, you don't need it yet. You're not dying. But when you are, God will give you the grace to die as a child of God. Well, we come and we take and put these, these promises back into prayer. We need to understand that God will give us using Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Philippians 4, 13, he'll give us the peace and power when we need it, but not before. Now, I can pray and I thank your prayer to God about his peace and power, but get up and feel no different. Yet, when I go out and I deliberately, notice my words, deliberately put myself into a gospel-sharing situation, I know God's peace and power will be there. I have an old friend of mine. Well, he's quite old now. He loved to share the gospel. Here's how this man would describe this whole process. He said, when I pray about my fears, he says, it's like pulling the pin on a hand grenade. Now, you may not like the militaristic terms, but he was a World War II guy and he knew about hand grenades. But he said, when I pray about my fears, it's like pulling the pin on a hand grenade. I leave my house, he said, with my hand on the handle of the hand grenade. Then when I get into a gospel telling time, I let the handle go and God's peace and power come. Well, the man who told me this uh, would leave his house every day expecting to get into a gospel telling situation at some point in time. And he almost always did. He went looking for them. Why? Why? Because in his hand was that hand grenade of confidence in God, already with the pin pulled. He had his weapon of conquering fear ready to lock and load. All he did was need to let go and let his faith explode as he began to tell the gospel. Friend, if you're saved, there's some things you and I need to do. We need to we need to sing. God says we need to sing, even if we can't carry the proverbial tune in a bucket. We are to sing with joy in our hearts to the Lord. But we are to tell the gospel. No matter who you are, no matter your age, you and I who know Christ are to tell the gospel. Fear, oh yeah, we all have it. But God has told us if we bring our fears to him, we can be anxious and fearful about nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, Well, God, as we present our our prayer request to him for this fear issue, God will replace our fear with his confidence and his peace and power. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.